Hi everyone, it's Kerry with you today. In my last video I shared some tips and techniques on preparing your tags and building your stash so that you can embellish them later on. So today we're going to look at doing some of the tags or embellishing some of the tags. If you haven't seen this video on how we've prepared these tags, I'll leave a link in the description box below in case you want to watch that one first. So today we'll work on these two tags. These have very simple elements added onto them. So stickers, the Tim Holtz paper dolls, a few quotes, and there's a label here and some cheesecloth. So these are all elements that are already prepared and ready to go. So you don't have to do anything else to them before you add them onto the tag. So when you're working with the Tim Holtz paper dolls or if you've got other fuzzy cut images of people, you just need to be mindful of... Um, their stance or you know what they're doing so for example this little boy's got his arm hanging out to the side as if he's leaning on something so if I didn't have the violin here for him to lean on it might look a little bit strange so I've got another image here that's similar this little girl was actually joined to something else I don't remember what it was it was probably just another person but uh, her arm her outstretched arm here would look a little bit strange if I just glued her on like that. So I've selected this guitar from, it's the same set of stickers that um, the little violin came from. So I've selected this guitar because when I pop it down on the tag next to her, it is roughly the right height. So it can be sitting on what would be the ground where her feet are. And then her hand can just be hidden behind the back part of the guitar because her hand's actually been cut off there anyway so and that will work just fine if um, if I didn't want to use her hand here I could just trim it back to her sleeve and then it would just look like she's got her arm by her side but you also need to be mindful of the proportions of the items that you're using so for example it would look strange if it, if I tried to make it look like she was leaning on this piano because the piano is so much smaller than the girl is, so the proportions wouldn't work out there. So when I want to stick her down on the tag, I also need to think about in the in the book or wherever I'm going to put this tag, is dimension going to be a problem? So if it is, you don't want to use any foam dots or any. 3D foam that's going to lift her off the page at all because when you try and stick that into a pocket it's going to catch and be difficult to get in and out so if it's going to go in a pocket then I would steer clear of using anything that's got dimension and just stick everything down as flat to the tag as possible. So I'm just going to add some inking around the edge on this one. Sorry I should have had that done first. When I'm placing her down, now if I was working with a tag that we had done the vertical collage on, I would need to find some something for her to stand on. If I just stuck the girl on the tag like this, she's kind of floating in the air. It doesn't really look, she's not grounded. It doesn't look like she's standing on anything. If you've used horizontal collage, she could actually just stand on top of that collage and that's perfectly fine. It looks like she's standing on something. If I didn't have that collage there, I could add a piece of washi tape, add another little piece of collage, or you can just take a um, pen or marker or something and just draw in something that gives some grounding. And it doesn't have to be much. It's just, it will make more sense to your eye if she has something, if, if it looks like she's actually standing on something. So on this one, I'm going to add a little bit of shading underneath where her feet would be. Because it just looks like a little bit of shadow anyway. So there we go. Let's move that over a little bit because there's some glare there. And I'm just going to use, um, I'm going to use hot glue to glue this on today. Normally I would use a wet glue. But I want this to dry really quick so I can move it around. So there we go. 
which is stuck on there now. And then I'll take the guitar, oops, hot glue strings, and I'm just going to line that up roughly with her hand. Now these stickers stick really good when they're brand new, but over time the stickiness can wear off. So again, if I was not in, not wanting to move it, I'll just use normal glue. But for today, I'm going to use hot glue. So lining that up with her hand and then sticking that down like that. And I'm just going to put a little bit of shading under the guitar as well. There we go. So, so now that I've stuck those down, I'll just finish it off with a quote sticker. And um, I'll just pick this one. There we go. And that's all the embellishing that I'll do on the tag. Now I want to add some fibres or uh, ribbons to the top of my tag. I've got these little metal findings. And a lot of you were asking about these, what they're called and where did I get them. So these ones I actually got from um, a store that was closing down and I bought all of the ones that they had. I have no idea what they're called. They didn't have a name on the bag. It was just a big bag. These ones here I got, I think, from a hardware store or from eBay. I'm not sure, but the purpose of these were for hanging the wire or string on the back of a picture. So if you looked up picture hangers or I think some people were calling these D-rings because they have a little D-ring shape. Um, you might be able to find those on eBay. I have got some of these listed in my shop in the, these different colours. When I looked on eBay, I was only able to find these plain sort of silver ones with this almost heart shape on the top there. Uh, but if you're interested in those, I'll pop li links. All the links will be in the description box below. So people are asking how do I attach them. So they come um, with a split and you can just easily open the split so to attach it to the tag there's several ways you, that you can do it you can uh, just pop a little bit of glue in there and you can stick it on and glue it if you want to or i split the tag i split the the two sides and i line up the whole of my tag with the hole in the little metal finding and then i just take a brad pop the brad through the hole split the bread and that's it secured there and then you can just pop your fibers in there if you didn't want to use a bread you could actually also use a little eyelet and you just pop that through the hole and then use an eyelet setter secured on there now and then you can just add your fibers through there so when I'm selecting uh, fibers or ribbons for my tag I take my tag with me to my ribbons and I find colors that match what I've got going on in the tag so I've selected this brown black and just some uh, neutral colored sari silk now this brown is a little bit light, so I'm actually going to just use my Distress Oxide to grunge it up a little bit. So I'll place my ribbon over the top of my ink pad, put my foam blending tool over the top, and I'm just going to run that through the ink pad a little bit. And this is the Walnut Stain. There you go. Then to crinkle the seam binding, I just add a couple of little mists of water. Give it a bit of a screw up in my hands. And then straighten it back out a little bit. Add my seam add my sari silk. 
thread it through the D-ring. And there we go. That one's ready to go now. So I'm going to work on this little girl now. Before we sketched in a ground for her to stand on and I just used a Stabilo oil pencil which is water reactive so I misted it slot with a little light spray of water and then I've just smudged it with my finger so now the ground looks a little bit more shadowy. Um, I want to add some colour into the background of this tag because it's neutral I can add colour and that, that's going to work just fine. So I've got these um, mint labels here. Now it was very white and stark so I've just gone over the top with a little bit of walnut stain distress ink and I'm just going to stick that onto the back of my tag here behind my little girl and I've left it to hang over the edge a little bit which I'll trim off later. It's sometimes nice to let things hang over the edge a little bit because if you try and cram everything within the confines of your workspace it can look too cramped and your eye doesn't look beyond the center of the tag so if you have something hanging off it lets the eye think that the project doesn't end at the end of the tag it you know, keeps going beyond that so that's why I've left that there and I think I want to add a little bit of cheesecloth behind her to soften the background because the background is quite busy with the, all this music notes and the text if I add a little bit of cheesecloth behind that it makes her pop a little bit more up off the background so my cheesecloth is also very bright white so I'm just going to use a little bit of Distress Oxide and I'm just colouring the cheesecloth very randomly and then I might just give it a little light mist and let that mix in a little bit. Now I still want to leave some bits white. I don't want it to be one solid brown colour. So that'll do. I'm just going to dry that off a little bit. So I've laid my cheesecloth over the top just haphazardly and making sure that that's going to stick out from behind her. I'm not going to apply any glue before I put the cheesecloth down because the glue that I'm adding afterwards will glue both the cheesecloth and the little girl down. Again, I'm using hot glue just for the purpose of this tutorial, but if I was using, if I was doing it normally, I would just use wet glue and let it dry. The hot glue just lets it dry very quickly but it's a little bit um, thicker so she's she's popping up off the page a little bit more than what I would like so I'm just going to trim away some of the extra, extra cheesecloth There we go. So she's got a little bit of extra texture in the background there and that cheesecloth just helps her pop up from the background a little bit more. So I might just pop another word or phrase in her label there. Need to trim that little bit of cheesecloth away and I'll trim the edge of my label off now. And then I'll just use some distress ink to ink along the edge there. Now because I've added this little bit of colour here and there's no colour anywhere else. To make it tie in and um, match a bit better, I've selected some ribbon that has that same mint colour and it also has colours from elsewhere on the tag. So I've got this very dark sort of charcoal, brownie charcoal colour, which is similar to her dress. And then I've just got some natural coloured sari silk. So 
I'll just pop that onto the tag using the same method that I did for the other one. So there we go, she's all finished now and ready to add into our journal. So you can see by using these pre-prepared elements such as the Tim Holtz paper dolls, a few stickers and some phrases or words, it's really quick to finish off these pre-prepared tags and then add them to your journals. So um, I'll pop links in the description box below to all of the items that I've used. And in the next video I'll show you how we can apply some decoupage napkin images and also how you can add a little bit more texture in the background. So thanks so much for joining me today and see you next time. Bye!